Hello everybody and welcome to Parks Bros. It's Drew here and we're here at Sesame Place for the official media preview. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait to check out this brand new park. Let's go. First thing you see after walking through security is going to be a ticket booth on your left hand side. So of course if you have not bought a pass or a ticket, this is going to be the place to go. But look at this awesome photo walk and the actual main entrance is right there. Before you enter the park proper, also you can see the height requirements for every single slide and ride. The rides and roller coasters are going to be on the left and the water slides on the right. So I hope this is very helpful if you're planning a visit. Let's take our first steps into Sesame Place. Oh my goodness, we're immediately greeted by Sesame Street proper. You got Hooper's store directly to your left, which is really cool. Kind of your generic gift shop and whatnot, it seems like. You've got a carousel to greet you with Big Bird up on top. And then of course the rest of Sesame Street over here with plenty of interactive parts for especially the little ones. I know they're gonna love it. Uh, very reminiscent of the Orlando land at SeaWorld Orlando, which is fantastic in its own right. But this feels a little more fleshed out. I'm not gonna lie, but it is a full park too. As we're walking just behind Big Bird's Nest, there is so much detail everywhere in this beginning area. I love this, like literally all of this thought out. It's fantastic. Even the little birdhouses next to Big Bird's Nest. I love that so much. It's a great photo op right here. Even has some of his favorite knickknacks on top of the branches there. This is wonderful. Like seriously, even over at the newsstand, which they'll be back soon. I'm sure they promise. They've got some like March Madness going on. That's that's very topical at the moment. This is this is really cool. I love how much detail there is, and I especially love all of like the postcards representing New York City. Do not knock on a can. What? Which can? This one? I guess Oscar's not home right now. Well, oh, wait. Do not ring the doorbell. <gasps> Who's knocking on my can? Oh no! Also at one, two, three, it seems like you can get a photo with Elmo and friends, which is really cool to know. But while you're waiting outside in this little stanchioned area, there's also this beautiful mural. This is so cool. I love how much time that, that has been put into this little area. I mean, technically, this park is not brand new per se. This was a water park that was SeaWorld Aquatica prior to this but it seems like they've redone almost everything and it definitely makes it feel brand new, especially this front entrance area. And I'm very curious to see what the rest of the park looks like. Of course, that first attraction you're gonna run into is the sunny day carousel. You must be 42 inches to ride, at least alone. But this is, this is beautiful looking. I love the little zebra's face, look at his face. But the second ride that you'll be greeted with is a water slide, Cookies Monster Mixer. You gotta be at least 48 inches to ride this one. This thing looks insane. I mean, look at this big bowl. You're gonna be sliding back and forth like that uh, in this funnel. It's, it's pretty incredible looking, but Cookies definitely got some monster cookies coming along. But I will say, compared to the sunny day carousel, it's quite intimidating right behind it like that's literally like it's right there so <laughs> it's kind of a crazy change of scenery quite quickly but if you're curious especially on those hot summer days dip and dots are available right near the entrance too which is really cool literally of course as we're gonna walk by the rest of Sesame Street we'll come back to that a little later we're gonna walk by the park photos which is right next to cookies monster mixer and Big Bird's rambling river but we're heading to that the roller coaster at the park, Super Grover's Boxcar Derby. But look at this, this is, this is actually fantastic looking. I'm loving this so far. Oh my goodness. We're about to ride the coaster. Well, 
there goes the first public or semi-public train, that is. Down the drop. Coaster nerds. So that's Welcome to Super yeah. Rover's Boxcar oh, Derby. Oh, thank you. Thank Loose you. articles are not permitted. Oh, it should be left for the non-rider. Oh, oh, we're already at the top. Oh. 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 <laughs> Smooth. That was remarkably smooth. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been on a smoother, like, kid-friendly coaster. Like, legitimately. Yeah, that's like, so cool. First new ride done. So, I've been on three Super Grover's boxcar racers now. That is probably my favorite. That was a heck of a lot of fun. Ridiculously smooth. Like, unbelievably smooth. And then in addition to that, the views of the surrounding area are just gorgeous. That's a great start to the day. Like, I'm very excited. Let's, let's keep going. After a quick opening ceremony by both the park president and SeaWorld CEO, let's go into Mr. Hooper's store. It's gonna be your main stop for gifts, towels, t-shirts, everything in the park. Let's get a full tour. There's tons of pins, which I definitely think I'm going to collect a couple of these. I need to find a D. Is there a D in there? No, but there's an A. I definitely use the A. <gasps> it's Snuffy. You get cups with your name on it. Oh my goodness, they have Squishmallows. Oh, that Super Grover one is precious. Tons of drink cups and drink refills are $1.99 with any drinkware purchase at the park. There's, of course, tons of little stuffed friends from original characters to new. Something really cool though, is that if you buy something, you can get a package pickup and then enjoy the park before picking up your merchandise later on that day. What is this? It looks like you can make your own cookie monster. Whoa, that's, that's kind of crazy. For $19.99, that actually looks like a heck of a lot of fun. It's like a, like a potato head, actually. It looks like it's the same type of system so they've got like the head for Cookie Monster, his arms, cookie jar, you know, all these accessories, right? And then sandals, flip-flops, maybe even just bare feet. That's actually a really cool idea. I really like that. And of course there are tons and tons of little activities like crayons for drawing or even little puzzles that you can purchase. This is literally the best place, at least on the West Coast, for Sesame Street merchandise easily. Mind you, I've only looked through half of the store so far. Of course, since this is a water-focused park, you can get some towels here, $25, $24.99 specifically. Really like that Cookie Monster one. Some really cool designs on here, honestly. And of course, if you want more Cookie Monster merch, there's literally two sections of everything you need Cookie Monster-wise, including a onesie. Actually, I'm very curious, how much is this onesie? Uh, ooh, where's the tag? Where's the tag? The tag is here. $59.99. That is very tempting. But so is this little plushie. How cute is that? He's a little cook. Or a baker? He's a baker. He's a baker. Scram. Scram? But I just got here. Okay, I gotta be honest. These little like pillow head things, unlike Squishmallows, these are adorable. I love these so much. I mean, I'm not saying Squishmallows are not adorable. I'm just saying they are not the same thing if that makes sense. But there's also a full section for Abby Cadabby and Oscar the Grouch, which I absolutely love. And of course, Elmo has his own section just right next door. And of course, we could not forget the Count. They also have the Sesame Street Lego set, so tempted, as well as some amazing lounge fly backpacks. This is adorable. I would love that. But you know what's even better? At least for me, I'm an Oscar the Grouch fan. I love being lost in Grouchland myself. This 
this is phenomenal. Like they even have a little a little wallet that says Scram. That's so amazing. Man, I I really, I really want to buy all of it. After checking out Mr. Hooper's, that legitimately, that store has its merch game on point. Seriously. Like the merch is just incredible in there. Very tempted as a lifelong Sesame Street fan to get some stuff. But for now, let's go check out some more rides. Well, next up is gonna be the Sunny Day Carousel. But this is something that I feel like I, I, I have to mention. Every single ride has a sensory guide in, in accordance with it being a certified autism center. The entire park is one, which is just incredible if you ask me. But just, just for your information, every single ride has a full sensory guide. Always love a good carousel. So much fun. Zach got himself the zebra. Extreme laterals on the zebra. <laughs> now, as we make our way out of the Sesame Street area, you can see the self-service lockers as well as the stroller rental area is over here. And if you're curious, this is what the lockers look like. And they're about the same size of the lockers that you would see, at least these lockers are, the same size you see at SeaWorld San Diego for all of their attractions. And then here's like the all day massive lockers um, that you know you can fit a full bag and a half in, which is awesome, especially if you have your family here. On the opposite side of Cookie's Monster Mixer, we've made it to the restrooms just next to those locker areas. And of course, some more souvenirs. Awesome sunglasses there, I love those. Also, fuel rods are available, but the men's restroom is right there, the women's restroom is right there. And it's all right across from Sesame Street, Soar and Spin, a fun little balloon ride. Very excited to try this eventually. Oh, and let's soar and spin. Oh my gosh, we're already spinning. Zach, no. Oh my goodness. Oh no. Okay, I will say, if you really try to spin this thing, it gets spinning quite a lot. Woo! You can get great views of the wave pool over there and every slide in the park. This looks fantastic from up here. It's a great vantage point. Seriously, a really beautiful park all around. Next up is gonna be the Cookie Climb. This is a really fun ride. Uh, you do have to do a little work. You pull on these these ropes and pull yourself all the way up to the top while it kind of slowly spins. It's a, it's a fun little interactive ride. If you're curious, you gotta be at least 38 inches to ride it and then 48 inches tall to ride it alone. Just past Cookie Climb though is Big Bird's Beach, the giant wave pool. Uh, we will be back here very soon. We just figure it would be a better idea to do all the dry rides first while we're in our regular street clothes before changing and then doing all the slides. So stay tuned for that. I only have one arm, so this is kind of tough. Oh man, getting the workout. I'm getting beat up top, but I can't wait to get all the way up there for the beautiful view. Oh, come on. You're slacking. I know I'm slacking, but I got one arm. You're slacking. I got one arm. There we go. All right, we're gonna drop. Oh, we're together. all we're all the way at the top. Wait, I want to get a I want to get a panoramic oh, no. view. Get your panoramic view. <laughs> <laughs> this is so beautiful. Seriously, the, the like the countryside, if you will, on the side of this park is just gorgeous. Also, it looks like there's quite a few eateries around us. But ready? Three, two, one, go! Closer to the top. Oh yeah! yeah. Can smell the cookies. Woo. Now back up to the top, huh? Oh, actually, oh, no. Let's go. Oh, be climbing. Oh, I feel like cookie right now. Me getting there. Ooh, ah. Gotta get to the cookies. Oh, still slacking down there. Dude, I'm getting like rope burn. Oh, oh, I made it. Nice. 
Welcome back. Thanks. Welcome back to the channel. Oh, oh I, I didn't hug. Oh, Woo! My hand's a little sore after that one, but so much fun. Really cool little view. Gentle little drop. It's just cool. I love these little rides. Oh my goodness, after that awesome climb, Big Bird's Beach is 15 seconds away from the waves. I love how they have the timer. That's awesome. Quick little look at the guide. I'm so ready though. Five seconds till the waves really hit. Of course, there are plenty of life vests for whenever you enter into the wave pool. I don't think everybody needs one, but I do, I do know that kids under a certain age definitely do. I don't know about adults per se. I'll try and find out. But there is a ridiculous amount of seating, like so much seating, all with their own umbrellas. I think it's going to be a great place to relax, especially with the waves coming in. They're not too big or anything. They're, they're a decent size wave though once you get all the way to the deep end. But I think this is like totally a relaxing wave pool if anything. Also, I want to mention on the opposite side of those seats that I just showed off, there's a bunch of extra seating here. It almost looks like a special whoa, event space. Whoa, it might be because it does look like there's some food potentially over there. I'll try and find that out too but tons of seats lining this entire wave pool, including even like bar seating, which is kind of cool. Look at that guitar. Oh my goodness, Rosita's Harmony Hills. This is a cool little play area. There's even some more stuff you can mess with like musically up top, which is really cool. I'm standing on the headstock of a guitar and walking down the neck. This is really cool. I love this little area. It's a nice little play area for the little ones. And it's also pretty well shaded too. But enough looking at this little play area. We have a show to get to, so let's walk that way. While we're walking that way, we come across Snuffy's Spaghetti Slides. I believe these are body slides, which we'll come take another look at these later. Say there's a lot of seating all over the park, which is really, really nice if you ask me. But now slides. you could see plenty of slides in front of us. We'll, we'll talk about more of these later, but we're walking directly next to Abby's Fairy Flight, which is a little swing ride. Of course, twinkling in the sun looks absolutely like a fun time, but it is directly next to the Sesame Street Theater and the Rub-A-Dub Sub. So if you know one of these classic bus rides that kind of spin all the way around like that, kind of like a washing machine, I think that's the perfect theme for it here. But now we're going to see a brand new show called Welcome to Our Street at the Sesame Street Theater. I love these little, oh my gosh, Scrambleton. So fun. Well, we've got our seat ready to go. Although I will mention this, uh, there's little to no shade in the stands. So be prepared for that. Make sure you lather up with sunscreen. My name is Danny and I'm the DJ here on Sesame Street. Welcome to our street was a heck of a lot of fun. I think the kids are really gonna enjoy that show. 
just just fun for the entire family. It gets you dancing, gets you singing along. It's just it's just a great time all around. Very excited to see a show like this here at Sesame Place. It fits right in. I will say, big bummer though is the shade. There's not really any shade, so thankfully we had our towels with us for later, so we use that as like a shade. But um, outside of that, Cookie Monster made that show for me. All of his little one-liners and zingers were just perfect. I was cracking up every time. Although he did have a little bit of an oopsie later on, but we're gonna ignore that. It's all good. He got his cookies in the end, so it's all good. So. Now, we're gonna get a couple more rides in on a couple of the dry rides, get some food, and then get swimming. Alrighty, the food establishment. I'm not entirely sure which food establishment this is, but here is your look at the menu. Bacon cheeseburger, impossible burger, or chicken sandwich for the entrees, served with waffle fries. A little pricey, not gonna lie. And then a kid's meal, choice of PB&J or chicken nuggets. Ooh, that sounds tasty. It's Grover's Grill. That makes sense with the color scheme. Well, we're not gonna get the burgers quite yet. We did get the desserts, a brownie and a cookie. I am kind of hoping though that this cookie, you'll see the size in just a second, is not the actual size they'll be serving. Cause if that's the case, then that's a little weird, not gonna lie. But the brownie, good size for sure. Let's try both of them. Well, it looks like I found out the actual portion size. It looks like you get a good five or six cookies instead of just the one. Cause the one is a little tiny. Of course, while we're thinking about starting to go to the slides, make sure you stop over by Sesame Souvenirs if you missed anything, like a hat, sunscreen, swim trunks, a, a bathing suit, anything that you need for that pool. Alrighty, well now it's finally time. Gotta get that bathing suit on. Let's go check out a bunch of the slides. I'm gonna switch to the GoPro, so the quality is gonna be a little different, but let's go. Oh my gosh, so excited for this. Alrighty, our first adventure is going to be in the Rambling River. This is a little lazy river, that is. So we actually went up the exit and are now trying to find the entrance. But the Count's Splash Castle is the perfect little play area. We might go in there a little later on after we take a cool ride in that lazy river. Okay, I know I can't, I can't, you know, convey this on camera really well. It is freezing water. <laughs> like it's a decently hot day. It's like a really warm day. This lazy river is freezing. I'm not going like past my waist on this because it's just so cool. Oh my goodness. Watch out for the waterfall. Woo. Right next to our exit and entrance for the lazy river, you have Ernie's Twisty Turny Tunnels, Bert's Topsy Turvy Tunnels, and Oscar's Rotten Rafts. Oscars is a group slide, so you can fit four people on a raft, which is cool. And then these are two tube slides, so you sit on a tube, one or two people, I believe, and uh, go down some enclosed tubes. I don't know what we're gonna do first, but there's three slides this way, and I know we're gonna head this way. So let's do it. Never mind, we're definitely doing Oscars because Bert and Ernie's, sadly, are closed at the moment. That's all good, though. Let's have ourselves a good old time on a group slide. I've not done one of these since I rode Hanu at oh my goodness volcano bay and that was that was pretty scary last time i was on that look at this view from the top of oscars it's a fantastic view of the entire park yeah. a little breezy oh, yeah. oh wow we're, we're picking up Next up is going to be Snuffy's Spaghetti Slides. These are a bunch of body slides. Very excited to try these out. Second slides of the day. I think I'm going to go for the open ones. I don't know what the other boys are going to do though. Oh boy, here we go. Oh, I have not done a body slide in so long. Woo, that is chilly. Fire time. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh. Oh boy, oh my, oh! <laughs> After that exciting adventure through that slide, that was so much fun. Highly recommend Snuffy Spaghetti Slides. Now we're in the wave pool. I gotta say, 
every slide, the Lazy River especially, has been really, really cold. But the wave pool is heated. It's it's like the perfect temperature right now. It's fantastic. All the way near the end, the deeper side of this wave pool. I gotta say the waves are almost calming for someone of my size, but of course for the little ones, it's gonna be a little intense. So I definitely like recommend you keep them a little closer to shore. But if you're, you know, of adult age like I am, this is a cool place to be. It's finally time. We're making our way all the way around the park. We've been here for hours now. It's time to ride Cookie's Monster Mixer, arguably the most anticipated ride here, dare I say? I'm very excited. I will mention though, uh, since we are walking around barefoot, um, most of the ground has been fine. The asphalt as we're walking on it is definitely a little hotter. So do keep that in mind when you're walking around. It's not unbearable or anything, but if you were to stand here for like half hour, Ooh. it'd be pretty bad. Well, let's get in the line. Right there was aggressive. Oh, that that backwards drop, at least it ended up being backwards for me, was insane. I thought it was just, it felt like it was almost vertical. <laughs> you know, I will say there is quite the gap in between like a lot of very kid friendly, family friendly rides, and then Cookie's Monster Mixer is definitely like a thrill, you know. So I, I will recommend, you know, if you have a smaller kid probably want to stick around to where we are right now. Elmo's silly sand slides. You can see a lot of decoration in this. Some small slides line the exterior as well as a small little pool right here with some waterfall features. I think this is really cute. This is perfect for the little ones, I think, definitely. Oh my goodness, is the bucket about to tip at the Count Splash Castle? Let's find out, shall we? Moving all around. Is it about time? Oh, come on, almost there. Right behind Count's Castle, though, is Abby Cadabby's private pool. This is exclusive to cabana guests only. So if you purchased a cabana for the day, you're allowed access to this pool. Okay, it's almost time for the main event. The finale parade, or as it's known, the Sesame Street party parade. That is going to finish up our day for the most part. We might get a couple more rides in, but perfect spot. Yes, no, we'll find out. It's gonna be a lot of fun, because it's about to start. Some thoughts real quick. 
on the Sesame Street Party Parade. If you've seen the parades at the other SeaWorld parks, or of course the other Sesame Place, it's going to be quite familiar. But it is such a fun time. I love, love, love how the parade stops and all the characters from the show as well as a bunch of dancers interact directly with you. Like that's just such a cool part of it. I mean, I caught Bert, you know, pointing straight at me to dance with him. That was so much fun. Um, you know, like there were all those little moments that will make that parade so much fun, especially for the little ones. I adore it. I think it's great. But we just took another ride on, of course, Super Grover's Boxcar Derby, if you could not tell. But now, we're kind of winding our day down a little bit. We're gonna check out a couple more things and then probably head out. Although I'm pretty sad to leave. Well, one of the final rides at the park that I have not mentioned yet is Elmo's Rockin' Rockets. This is a fun little ride, kind of like a, a Dumbo style. You know, you go up and down and spin in a circle and realistically you control how high or how low you go in all of these like Elmo themed space shuttles. I think that's really cool. A, a little creepy personally with Elmo's face on the front, but still a lot of fun nonetheless. It's, it's just a cool, another addition to the park. By the way, gotta be at least 48 inches tall to ride alone. Of course, before we head out, I figured I should mention all of the food locations, at least the major food locations, are located in the center of the park, including Telly's Trattoria. I said that inc incredibly wrong, but some pizza. And then of course you have Grover's Grill for some burgers and some chicken. And Monster Snacks, which has some waffle fries, chicken tenders, and a salad. We're gonna make our way out of Sesame Place San Diego after our first ever visit. That was a heck of a lot of fun. By the way, this is officially gonna be called the Streamer Tree from now on, because that's just iconic. But so is this park. Well, with that, our first ever official visit to Sesame Place San Diego is over. This is a park you're gonna have to hit up, especially if you're in San Diego. Goodbye, Sesame Place San Diego. We shall see you very, very soon. Also, what the? What? Is that a jet? So I keep trying to film this outro, but I keep being interrupted. I'm getting interrupted by a couple FA-18 Hornets that keep flying overhead. <laughs> they are ridiculously loud, even from miles away. But anyway, I'm not gonna let that distract me any longer. Sesame Place, San Diego, fantastic park all around. I really enjoyed the slides. I gotta say my personal favorite slide was Oscar's group slide, that, that raft slide where we had all three of us on it and it lasted forever. It was really, really kinda interesting to say the least and really exhilarating but a heck of a lot of fun also cookies monster mix was fantastic as well just a little short in my opinion and then of course uh snuffy's spaghetti slides were awesome as well I, I really enjoyed going down that body slide that was a lot of fun i apologize for how clunky this outro is but when you keep having these amazing aircraft flying directly overhead and they're this loud wait for it Wait for it. There it is. Anyway, let me go back to the, the, the topic at hand. Sesame Place San Diego is, is just, it's so much fun. It's so fun loving and friendly and the parade, the shows, 
Everything about it is amazing. The slides are really great. Although I, I do think a little, probably a little too intense for the, for the little ones in your group. But then to make up for that, they have the smaller slide portions, the lazy river, and then of course the fun little rides, including Super Grover's Boxcar Derby, which is a really fun little family coaster. I mean, everything about the park was just really fun overall, even as a full grown adult. So I highly, highly recommend coming and visiting the park, especially if you're a SeaWorld pass holder, like me being a platinum pass holder, you can bet I'm gonna come down here just for a couple of rides on the slides and then hop over to SeaWorld after. Actually, we're doing that right now, but it's just a fun time, as I've said plenty in this video already. But with all that said, I wanna say thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. And if you enjoyed today's content, make sure to subscribe. I'd really appreciate that as well. But until next time, and before I get cut off again by another flyover, we'll see you on the next ride.